welcome to Gargar Knits. My name's Anita and I live in South Wales in the UK and you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Anita Bold and show notes will be found in the description box below. Well today it is Tuesday the 10th of November so the second Tuesday of the month which is my new time to record. As I live in Wales we have just come out of our fire break as England is going into their month-long lockdown. And the exciting thing for me here in Wales, and me in particular, is that I will now be able to travel up to see Jodie and Matthew and the children. So I'm really excited about that. So next weekend, when I'm not in work, that is where I'm going to be travelling. I hope you're all staying safe and well wherever you live. Excitingly for me, I have reached over 500 subscribers. Yay! I've been slowly creeping up towards 500 and then Angela from Yarn and Yarns was doing Vlogtober and she mentioned me on one of her videos and so did Leslie from Not Quite Enough Yarn. Not Quite Enough Yarn podcast, that's right, isn't it? So thank you very much, ladies. They both mentioned me and then my subscribers went over 500 so if you're a new subscriber welcome and if you are an existing one who's been following me for a while welcome also i have some sewing crochet cross stitch knitting and i want to do a giveaway for reaching over 500 subscribers too so i'll start with sewing because on my lap i have two rather large cushions a while ago I think I showed you this curtain fabric that my dad and stepmom gave me. It is lovely, really beautiful rich autumnal colours and the fabric itself is a little bit worn in patches. I don't know if it's moth damage or mouse or what but I think it adds to the overall charm. So I bought two big cushion inserts from Shaw's which uh, is a sort of uh, Shaw's the Drapers in Britain and they sell curtains and cushions and sewing and knitting things. So two big cushions and then I just made sure I had enough fabric to cover those. I used the whichever zips I had, I think they got different colour zips, but I'm very happy with those and they sit on my settee which makes the settee nice and comfy. So I finished those. Oh, got a squeaky chair, sorry. Do you want to be next, Beatrice? <laughs> and another sewing project at last. My Luna Lapin Beatrice has a dress. But she doesn't have <gasps> any knickers. So she's still a bit cheeky in every sense of the word. I haven't sewn a little um, button or anything on the back yet. But I thought that's quite sweet. And um, I didn't do, there's a little neck inter um, not interfacing facing for the neck and I just put some lace material on because I couldn't be bothered with a facing that small. So she's happy now she's got some clothes and she can sit next to Arthur in his clothes. He's got a nice little shirt. I'll get him. He's got his shirt from the book as well. I really like making these um little clothes they're very cute i thought this dress was actually more fiddly than the shirt i don't know why so anyway they could sit together their ears are a little bit floppy i uh i don't know i know this is because he's been very well loved by harry <laughs> but um there we are you two can sit there together and they can watch with us keep us company I've also made a little notions pouch and I put a little handmade progress keeper on it and lined it um, with the contrast fabric that goes in this range. I think it's Lewis and Irene fabrics and this is going to be part of my giveaway for reaching 500 subscribers so I should put that at the end so watch out for that. That's all my sewing. I have some plans for some Q 
future sewing, but I shall sh share those with you next time. What shall I do next? Knitting, I think. I have finished my sister-in-law's shawl. She asked me to knit her a shawl to be able to wear on the plane when she comes over as they live in America and she gets cold with the air conditioning on the plane. Not that she can come over at the moment anyway. And this is the campsite shawl by Alicia Plummer. I made one for myself recently out of the wrong weight yarn and ran out of yarn. So I was quite pleased to, to make it again because I really like this design with all the eyelets. Very pretty. And she asked for pink and red, which I thought was a bit odd, an odd combination, but actually I think it works out really well. And I used just acrylic yarns, the Kinko Big Value DK, this in fuchsia and red. So they're the different ball bands. And I bought enough yarn as stated in the pattern, but I didn't use it all. I had several balls of each left. So I'm going to have to think of something else. Not particularly my colours, but maybe I'll do um, perhaps a crocheted baby blanket or something out of them. So anyway, that's all done. I did try blocking it. I always say I'm not sure about blocking and I know why now because in the olden days when I first used to knit, all yarn in Britain, as far as I'm aware, was called wool and the majority of our knitting was acrylic and you can't really block acrylic yarn. So um, I just pinned it out and I used this steam from my iron. I held the iron about that much above the shawl and steamed it. I don't know if it worked. It sort of it flattened it out a bit, but I don't think you can really block acrylic yarn. You need proper nice wool. So that's done. And then... I have been doing a test knit for Lindsay from Stitch Create Love. She has been making some uh, knitting patterns for a while. She's done a few now. And she asked in her one of her recent episodes if anyone would like to be a test knitter. So I put my name forward and she contacted me and said, yes, I could be a test knitter. For this sock, it's the Seasonal Fruits sock. Now, I'm not sure if this is going to be the actual picture of the pattern. It is due to be coming out soon. And her patterns are absolutely amazing. There is so much detail in here. Now, this pattern, you can do toe up or cuff down. And she also has tutorials on her channel for the toe if you're going toe up which I did use and also the I think there's one for the heel which I also used there's one I think the there's three altogether one of them I didn't use I think it might have been for making sure you didn't get holes in your heels but I don't really tend to have a problem with that and then she's also done a tutorial to do this really nice stitch in the middle. But that one you get when you purchase the pattern. I think you get a link to that one because she can't give all her secrets away, can she? So these are the ones that I did. There's one and there's the other one. Now I'm holding them like this. I always make cardboard templates of feet. And then I put them in the sock to get the right sizing. So I've just put it on there so you can see the um, little design there. Now I think this is meant to be peaches for peaches and cream in the summer. And this is meant to be the wicker work of the basket. But I'm thinking mine are pumpkins because of the yarn, which is absolutely beautiful. And I have of the yarn left and it is by Miranda May and it's her chestnuts roasting 
colourway and I think she's still got some in her shop although I bought this quite a long time ago and it was so pretty the yarn um, these socks are meant to have contrast heels toes and cuffs but I wanted it all to be in the same colour because I just thought it was really a really nice colour and I did have some brown four ply yarn that I could have used with it but it seemed quite a bit thicker than this yarn so I didn't want to mess with it and they were so nice to knit. I did them toe up because I usually do my socks cuff down and I wanted initially as I was a test knitter the plan was to knit one toe up and one cuff down so that I could test out all of her instructions but I made the first one a little bit too big and then I decided as it didn't fit me I was going to gift it to my sister-in-law and as it was a gift I didn't want to do them two different ways just in case it did make a difference to them so I ended up just doing them toe up and I used um, higher higher sharps yes my higher higher sharps I think did I use doesn't say sharps but they are higher higher I think the higher higher sharps well they do they are very sharp if you ask me they are sharp <laughs> I use those and I thought these are actually quite good to have quite pointy sock needles because you do have to lift stitches over e over each other and it just was a lot easier with sharp needles and I made the, there's three sizes, and I made the middle size, so you can make, yeah, small, medium or large. So I did the 64 stitches, but uh, if I made them for myself, I would do the 56, because this pattern does make it quite stretchy, but they would have fit me it, if I'd done them correctly, but I, it was my fault I made them too long. I was obviously enjoying the pattern too much. I think when I'm making them for myself, I'm not as careful as when I'm making them for someone else. But I was trying to be careful with these and make a note of everything because they were a test knit. So they're lovely and they're done. And that's another Christmas gift out of the way. The pattern, when I'm not sure when the pattern is coming out, but I will double check. If I find out today, then I will put underneath here when the pattern is due to be released but Lindsay has also kindly uh, given me a copy of the pattern for you to and I'm going to add it to my 50 subscriber giveaway so that'll be exciting and I'll explain all about that later and my next project so this is actually well it's a work in progress because I need something that hasn't arrived yet to finish it off. So I've got this book, Knitted Pets, and I wanted to make my little grandson Jack a toy because he loves his cuddly toys. And Harry told me that Jack, he's assured me Jack wanted a snake. So I have knitted him a snake. But as I'm trying to use things out of stash, I've got this yarn here that is from Shaw's as well. That I think it's from Shaw's and I've had it absolutely ages. It's one of those ones where balls of yarn, you get 400 grams. Um, it's quite nice because it's got all um, sort of little flecks of colour in. I think it's one of their ones that's 90% acrylic, 10% wool, something like that. My plan was to knit it. If it looked a bit dull, I was going to um, sort of sew some stripes on the, what do you call that when you sew the stripes over the duplicate stitch? But I quite like how he's turned out. It, <laughs> he looks a bit like a snake at the front, at, at the head. So here he is. So this is the snake. And then you have to do a mouth in red. So 
So I've done the mouth. And then you have to do his tongue. When I've done his tongue, you can't really see these little bits, but I needed filling. And I didn't want to stuff it with toy foam. You can't really tell that, can you? I don't know why I'm showing you that. I didn't want to stuff it with toy foam because I didn't want him just to be, I wanted him to be sort of drapey. And I didn't want to use those little polystyrene beads either because I didn't think they would really make him sort of squidgy. And I just, I decided I wanted to use the beans that are in little bean bags that sort of you would throw. You remember in PE when you were a child, you used to have bean bags and throw them around. That sort of weighted one. So I wasn't quite sure what to look for, but there um, I've sent for some, I can't remember what they're called now. No, it wasn't buckwheat shells or something, kernels, I don't know, right underneath, but they haven't arrived yet. And I'm hoping they're going to be heavier and then it'll be more like a drapey snake. So as soon as that comes, I can obviously sew, I can't sew his mouth in because that's where I'm going to have to put all the stuffing. And then when I was looking through my stash, I thought, wouldn't it be good if he had a rattle or something at the end of his tail? But the only thing I had was one of these. And obviously that's not going to fit in his tail. So I thought I will put that in his head end. So when he's a snake, you can have a squeak. That'll annoy mummy and daddy, won't it? But it'll make me laugh. So that's a project then. I'm just waiting for the stuffing to arrive. And then, um, so that's my only working progress for knitting, but I have a planned cardigan that I want to make. I've wanted to make this for absolutely ages and it's really old pattern out of a woman's weekly and I like the lace and it's sort of a little it's fluffy it's just a little bit like mohair. The the yarn is Angora wool and nylon mix um, and there was a certain make that you had to have. Well, I looked it up, but they didn't do it. Oh, it's a Louisa Harding Kimono Angora Pure, but in berry. And I would have loved to have done it in that, but you can't get it anymore because it's so old. So I sent for some Angora. And here it is. It's a bit of a strange colour. Not so sure about the colour. And I had to send, this came from the Ukraine, I think. I bought it off Etsy. I will put the details underneath. And on Etsy, I, did, I try and buy from the UK. And I did put the UK only on. But when you then do another search for something else, it goes back, it defaults back to anywhere. So, and it didn't, I didn't know until I paid for it because the, the postage was similar to... Britain, I wouldn't have known until right at the end and I paid for it and then it said it was coming from Ukraine. But there we are, it doesn't matter, it's arrived. And I hope to get started on that shortly. And I also purchased some stitch markers because I've been watching Stitches and Jack's podcast and she had she did some vlogs through October, but she did weekly ones. And I was really enjoying those and she had said she had a little shop so I thought I'd buy something from her to support her and there's all her details although I only bought a tiny little thing so I bought some stitch markers and they come in this tiny little tin isn't it cute and I liked them because they are very appropriate for this year because I bought one that is the rainbow and one that says 2020. I don't know if I can show you even. I can't hold it and show you. 2020. I'll um I'll put a picture in so you can see them properly. I only, I only bought two, so she's not gonna make a fortune out of me, is she? But just a little something. So 
so yes yeah, so stitches and jacks she's got i'll put her i'll try and put a link to her podcast but i don't know if i can if i can i will because it's much easier just to be able to click on it and go straight there um and it's nice to support other podcasters so that's my knitting and on to crochet so i've got a few crochet items the first one being a little acorn this little acorn was from a free pattern on Ravelry I believe and I'll write down what it is here and you make it um, using a tutorial that Jeanette from Crafty Craig's podcast has put up recently again I'll link it if I can now I can crochet a certain amount anyway <laughs> but this tutorial is for complete beginners and you can always learn something from tutorials I think even if you think you know everything and I by no means think I know everything and one of the things I always struggle with is I never know when the end of the round is and I used to put a piece of yarn across to, know, to mark where the end of the round is but Jeanette shows you a different way and I've been doing that ever since and I know where I am. Oh, it's such a relief because I used to go around and always have the wrong stitch count. So this little acorn is supposed to have a little face and I decided not to put the face on to make it look more realistic. And the plan was to make several and put them all in a bowl, but look how big it is. I'm not going <laughs> to, it doesn't look realistic because it's huge, but it's cute and I keep it up here in my craft room on my little cupboard here so I see it and it makes me smile it makes me think of Jeanette and all her effort she went into teaching you how to make it so that was my finished object I couldn't remember what was in my bag then my lovely bag from Ellie at Craft House Magic and in here I am making a snowman for Christmas. The pattern is this one that I was gifted by the lovely Mariangela and I've started it. Now it does say to use a two millimetre hook and I'm using a three millimetre because a three millimetre, oh I keep mine in these, I know these are DPN cases but it's great for crochet hooks too. So my hook is a three millimeter, but that to me is small enough. And I've just started on his bottom. So we're working our way up the bottom. And this yarn here is one of the ones that my sister-in-law sent me. It's acrylic, it's squeaky. It's got a bit of glittery, glitteriness in it. It's wiggly and really hard to crochet with, but it's going to make a beautiful snowman and it'll be worth all the effort if I don't lose it on the floor first. Right, I'm going to put it back in my little case because I don't want to drop my stitch. And I've got my boring old row counter in it, but this is the type that Jeanette said to use. Oh, sorry, it's a phone call coming through every few minutes. Sorry, I'm recording on my phone today to see if that sort of zooming in and out thing stops. So I'll have to ring them back later. And that's the that's the name of the yarn. Um, which is fine for little toys and things, but I wouldn't really like to knit with it. So I'm enjoying working on that. So thank you, Mariangela. It was very kind of you to send me the pattern. Um, uh, yes, that's crochet. I haven't done that much. I'm not so much a crocheter as a knitter, and I'm quite enjoying sewing more than anything at the moment. And I have some cross stitch to show you. Now I'm trying to work my way through the Craft Pod subscription I had last year. And in the winter one, Lucy from Attic24, that's usually crochet patterns, 
has done this really nice Scandi house and trees and I have finished it because it's only it's very simple it's only one colour and it doesn't take very long and I've put it in a little red frame that I had from Tiger and I think it looks nice in there it did come with a little hoop uh, one of these little hoops and I did consider putting it in that but I think it looks nice in there and I know you've got a big expanse of the white ada but I still think that looks, that looks nice I like it so I've put it in that so that's another of the craft pod projects done and then I have been trying to work through all my different stash items projects and things and I had a little kit for a gingerbread house and I treated myself to this beautiful cross stitch bag I'm now a true cross stitcher because I bought this bag from Davina at Little Workroom Crafts and she customized the colors for me because this color here the blue with the roses looks really nice in my craft room and it came really quickly and it's beautifully made and it's got this nice clear front so you can see my project in it and then I also purchased one of these oh I better take that off because that actually is the pattern one of these metal magnetic um, boards that you can put the rulers on so you can keep an eye on where you are because the patterns are quite busy this is so useful I mean it's really easy to make yourself because it's just got a magnetic strip on the back but it doesn't matter it wasn't very expensive I got it on Etsy I think it was Etsy oh no actually I think it was on Amazon but the lady's got a little shop so I will put the details down if you're interested in getting one and it came very quickly and is helping me to keep an eye on where I am so this is the kit and I have looked it up and you can still get it although it's quite expensive now and I think I would have probably got it in a sale I think probably Hobbycraft and that's as far as I've got and it's on this plastic Ada do you call it Ada if it's plastic and then when you finished it you cut it out and it's um, a Christmas ornament and I've tried to keep the back quite neat but I think what I will probably do is maybe put some felt backing on it because I did that with this um, my other craft pod I just put some felt on the back and it looks quite neat like that I hadn't put anything in a hoop before kept it in the hoop so I put some let me take it off I put some wadding in a circle of wadding in there and then I tacked big tacking stitches around the back of this fabric pulled it in and then used my little glue gun and glued on a patch of felt not quite sure if that is how you're supposed to do it I think it is anyway it worked quite well and I do want to hang this up downstairs but there's no nothing to go with it yet and it look a bit lonely on a big wall <laughs> just that on its own like oh, hang him back up so I was thinking I might do something similar on there puts a felt backing on it because then I can hang it maybe from the tree or from somewhere else and if the back or maybe I could embroider something on the back or put Christmas 2020 or something anyway I'll think of something on the back because I do but it's such so pretty on the front if it does twist around you don't want it just plain do you I'll have to think of that that's the fun I think of of making things yourself you can do what you like can't you let your imagination run wild so, oh, so that's my cross stitch in my beautiful beautiful bag and my last cross stitch project which is a work in progress it's going to go on forever is the boys blanket and after my last episode I carried on cross stitching on this so I haven't worked on it for a while because I did them the two squares then and I've started doing the alphabet 
don't know if you can see. So I've done A, B, C, D, E, F. And these letters are so much quicker than the letters for <laughs> their little names. So they were quite fiddly because they got actual little, um, like the jam jar and things, where these only have flowers. So, and they don't, you don't have to go around the edges. So they were good fun to do and nice. I could make them nice and large. I could do them over two stitches. So that was fun. So they are out of this book. It's a second hand book I picked up. I don't know if you can still get it. I haven't looked that one up. And they're the letters. So we're going to go all the way through the alphabet. That'll take a bit of time. And then we've got some other pictures and things to put on there. Oops, so that's that done. So that's all the things I'm working on at the moment. And obviously my cardigan is going to be my next thing. And I, oh, let me just get you some fabric. One of my next sewing plans, I bought this fabric from Julie, it's so unique. And it's really, really lovely and cute. I did show it off before with the little trucks and the trees. And I want to make Harry and Jack Christmas sacks. And, and I needed some, some lining to go with this. So it's, it's a sort of strange blue. And then it's got the white snow. So I couldn't get anything quite matching. But they in John Lewis, they had this gingham check and I think it goes it's not too bad let's put that end and you can see so that's gonna that's gonna be the lining and then this is going to be the outer of the bags and a nice big sack draw with a drawstring at the top and then all their presents can go in there and if I've got well I will have left leftovers I'm going to make something um some English paper piecing. I don't know what yet, but I know I haven't done that for a while and I was really enjoying doing that. I just don't have enough time to do everything I want to do. So that's all my projects I've been working on. And the last thing is my giveaway. So once again, thank you so much for subscribing and for supporting me and leaving comments and thumbs up. I really, really do appreciate it. And I always answer any comments and um, it's just wonderful and I love the interaction we all have and getting to know you all brilliant so as a thank you I would like to do a giveaway now as I say I've made this little notions pouch because when I first got back into knitting like I say years and years ago when I used to knit you'd buy your wool from the wool shop and it came in a carrier bag and that's the bag you left your knitting in but now it's brilliant because you have beautiful project bags you have notion pouches and you have all your notions in there i didn't even know what notions um were when i came back to knitting and watched the all these youtube channels so i have made this bag and i'm going to fill it with all the little notions that i find useful when i'm knitting and um, I've got some stitch markers coming because anyone who knows me knows I have a little problem buying things online to do with sizing. Oh, show you. And I bought these thinking I would make them, I would use them as stitch markers and put them in here because they, they look so nice online. Look how small they are. They are little tiny hearts. And I thought they would be beautiful stitch markers, but obviously not because you're not going to get those on a needle. So I've said there's some more, but things like that. Um, but I don't want to give away too much what's going to be in it because I want it to be a surprise for whoever wins. And also Lindsay's seasonal socks pattern will be part of the prize. And she will, I think you will have to message her and she will sort it all out anyway later. So if you would like to win the notions pouch that I've made with all the little notions in that you need for knitting and a beautiful 
sock pattern, I would like you to subscribe to my channel, to give me a thumbs up and to just comment um, how you discovered my channel. Did you hear about it from somebody else? Did you follow a link? Did YouTube let you know? Did you just stumble across me just out of curiosity? A little bit of market research. How did you find my channel? And then you have a chance to win this, the sock pattern and all the notions. And I will draw a winner on my next episode, which will be the second Tuesday of December. Oh, goodness. And then I will send out the prize to whoever wins. Doesn't matter where you live, I will send it to you. So good luck with that. And please, everyone, stay care. Oh, and please, everyone, stay safe and take care. And if you are somewhere in the world that is in lockdown at the moment, please try and stay calm and enjoy your crafting. And I shall see you all soon. Don't forget to leave a comment, subscribe, and be in with a chance to win. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye for now.